Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of our new uploads. If you'd like more information about the Net Bible Church or how you could donate, please click on the link below. Thank you so much for watching. So we talked about on Sunday about the gospel and the gospel basically is just a word for good news. The word gospel means good news, not bad, but good. And so, um, you know, we talk about different subjects. We talk about faith and who we are in Christ. And we talk about healing. We talk about prayer and um, many different subjects, but they all come under the gospel. And, and Sunday we talked about, we talked about hell. Why is the subject of hell um, under the gospel because we don't have to go there because <laughs> because if Jesus is your Lord just the mere fact that Jesus is your Lord you're not going to hell hell wasn't when we talked about how hell was not made for humanity that hell was made for Satan Diablo the devil and his followers amen so um and I thought you know anyway I was praying about what to speak about and I was kind of get ready to just like, you know, looking up some something I was that stirred my heart and all of a sudden I was like looking up scriptures about heaven and I thought, oh <laughs> right after you talk about hell, it's probably good to talk about heaven. <laughs> because but the good news, I think it's when you talk about hell, the good news is if you're a born again Christian, if you believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead and you confess Jesus as your Lord, that that confession those words are seeds and you become born again. So you're not like you used to be. I mean, and it's kind of hard sometimes when you are raised in the church and you maybe had, had Jesus, asked Jesus to be Lord, maybe got filled with the Holy Ghost and you had these things happen when you were younger and you kind of just grew up and that's all you knew. You, it's hard for you to di di differentiate. <laughs> when did this happen? And so if you're, if you're not sure, then all you got to do is say, God, I'll just, right now it's going to, you know, I don't know when it, but I'm going to just make that confession right now. And, and I don't have to see lightning and hear thunder and, you know, I don't have to feel the earth shake under my feet. <laughs> but I know that the Bible says that if I believe my heart, confess in my mouth that you are Lord, then I will be saved. So you're born again without any lightning. Amen. So, so when you get born again, you know, you are, you're exempt <laughs> from hell. You don't have to go because every single human being is born into sin. And we've talked about this. We're all born into sin, but because of Jesus, he paid the price so we can be unborn <laughs> or born again. Amen. That we can um, escape hell. But I just wanted to share a couple of scriptures here um, about, about the good news that, because there's a lot of things that are good news that we can enjoy here on this earth and in this lifetime. But there's some things coming that we need to, you know, be reminded of, you know, and um, it's, it's good news. <laughs> it's just good news. I'm going to start in John 14. This is John <clears throat> Chapter 14, starting at verse 1, and I'm going to read through 14. This is the NIV. It says, do not let your hearts be troubled. That's John 14, 1. You believe in God, believe also in me. And this is what Jesus was speaking, these words to his disciples. My father's house has many rooms. If it weren't not so, I would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. And take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, you know, Thomas is the doubter. This is before Jesus died and was raised. He says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way. Isn't that awesome? And the truth and the life. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? 
No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been with you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father <clears throat> is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. I love it that he said it twice, just in case the first time you hear it, you thought you didn't hear right, he said it again. Amen. But I'm going to read this out of the King James, just verses two and three. He says, in my father's house are many mansions, are many mansions. And if we're not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. Amen. So we understand just because the price that Jesus paid that we could not pay, <laughs> he paid the price that we could not pay. And because he paid that price and we receive him as Lord, the good news is he's preparing a place for us. Amen. He is preparing a place for us. I don't know how far along they are. <laughs> I don't know if your foundation's been poor. I don't know. But all I know is he said that he is preparing a place for us. And that's what he is doing. Amen. And that place is a mansion with no mortgage. You don't have to get insurance on it. <laughs> you don't have to borrow from the bank. You don't have to pay your light bill. You don't have to pay for heating or air conditioning. Everything is paid for. Amen. And not only that, he is building it according to what he knows that you love. He's going to build it according to what you, how you would like things to be. Amen. If you like a mountain view, if you like a water view, if you like both, He's preparing it exactly to the specs that he knows when you see that, you will be in awe. Amen? Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 19. It's coming. It's just like when somebody tells them, we're, next, next summer we're going to go to Disneyland. And they're getting all excited, just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> let, let me just say, we're all going to heaven. Matthew 6 and 19, it says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and ver vermin, vermin, <laughs> I felt like I was in Kentucky or Tennessee when I read that, vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Why? Because on earth there's vermin. <laughs> there's rats and there's bugs and there's, I don't know what's going on on my patio this year. Because they got, you know, plants out there. And I don't know why. They're just, all, I don't know what kind of spiders are out there. They're, they're wanting to make webs on everything this year. Vermin. <laughs> Amen. But it says, don't store for, don't, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Do things in this life, invest your time and your finances, your life, your love, your heart, invest yourself into heaven and into the gospel and into the future. Amen. And so, but, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy. 
because I, I don't think there's any there. <laughs> there's no vermins, whatever that entitles. <laughs> right? Where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal, there are no jail cells in heaven. <laughs> there, the court of law is the only time we're going to have a court of law is on the judgment day of Christ when, when everything is done and wrapped up. The judgment day of Christ is going to be the last session of court. No more thieves, no more robbers, no more murders, no more having a, no, let me just say, you know, one thing I really like about Hawaii is it's all open air. I mean, I always think, there's no doors on this place and there's no windows. Why? This restaurant, they, all the restaurants just have all their chairs and tables and everything's just out in the open. The lobbies are, you just walk in and you're like, <laughs> okay. And it's just all open air. That's how it's going to be in heaven. That's why I like it so much. Because nobody's going to break in and steal and take something that doesn't belong to them or harm somebody. Nobody's going to cut you off in traffic. <laughs> nobody's going to cut you off. There's no cutting off. There's no, it's so hard to even imagine what it's going to be in an open air. We won't have to lock our doors at night. You know why? Because there's no night. <laughs> Amen. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. Now I'm going to read one out of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians in chapter 2. I really believe that the Lord didn't put a real lot about heaven in the Bible for a reason. Let me see if anybody could have the same idea that I might. Do you know I got... There's not a, there's things about heaven, so it's absolutely there, and he gives us some things. But, but have you noticed there's not like a lot about heaven? Because God didn't want us to know so much about it that we just would say like, I'm out of here. See you guys later. I'm stepping out in front of a train. <laughs> God, God just wanted to give us a little taste to know it's going to be good. It's going to be real good. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, says, However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. These, I'm talking about physical things, even though I don't want to, material things. There are material things in heaven. Amen? But there's also things in heaven that aren't material, that we can have a taste of it here. Do you ever get a taste of something that's so delicious, like they give you a sample? You know, you go to the store, they give you samples, and, they, and, and you taste it, and it's so delicious. They do that for a reason. Because they, they're counting on the fact that it tastes so good that you're going to want more. And you're going to buy more. And so I really believe that sometimes God just gives us a little taste. So that we want, a more, want more. Amen. And, and so in, in this life, he gives us a taste of the next life. Which is we can taste that joy. We don't get, there's times we can experience it pretty full. But God said in his word, no, no mind can conceive. Nobody's seen it or heard it. Nobody can conceive the things that God has planned for us. So when God gives us a taste of the joy, ooh, you like that joy. He going, let me just say, he gives us a little sip. Well, we're going to get the whole enchilada when we get to heaven. Let me just say, we can experience the peace of God here, but that's all we're going to have in heaven. You know, if you've ever been hurt by somebody or cut off from someone or somebody tried to bury you, <laughs> he didn't know you were a seed. If, somebody, if you've had people come against you and 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 tail bear about you. Let me just say, when you leave this body, all that is over. None of that will ever happen again. It's over. When you get to heaven, that stuff doesn't go on there. There is no sin. 
There's no tail bearing. There's no mean or angriness. There's, there's no backbiting. None of that is in heaven. It's so hard to comprehend how awesome heaven is going to be. Amen? And even if we sit here and contemplate what it would be like to have no darkness, no night, peace and rest and joy, no, no brokenheartedness, nothing ever for all eternity, we still would never be able to imagine how awesome that will be. Amen? So in Revelations, here's another thing about heaven. Revelations 21.4 says, He will wipe every tear from their eye. <laughs> he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. There's no funerals in heaven. There's no graveyards in heaven. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> there's no funerals, wakes, you know. You know, there's nobody getting married in heaven. There's, there's no going to car, court or paying traffic tickets or getting in car accidents. There's never a concern about how to pay ever any bill ever again. There's never a concern about transferring money or getting your paycheck or how much you make an hour because everything will be paid for. We'll have no need of finances. We'll have no need of any of that. Amen? Can anybody begin to comprehend? All I know is I, it's hard to comprehend, but all I know is it sounds real good. Amen? No dings in your doors. <laughs> no concern about how much mileage you have on your car. <laughs> Amen, Revji. No concern about travel. Let me just say, no concern about being tired on the road. No concern about, you know what, it's going to be exact, it's going to be exactly like heaven. <laughs> Amen. I just read this one thing in Revelations chapter 22. Then the angel showed me, verse one, then the angel showed me a river of water, of the water of life, as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life. Woo! I don't know how a tree could stand on each side, but I'm looking forward to seeing this phenomenon. On each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops, of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. No more curse. No more curses. Amen. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need a, lamp, a light of a lamp for the light or the light of the sun for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever that word rain let me just say that word rain is the same rain that we have in the earth as far as being a child of God we can reign in this earth rule and reign and have authority in this life in our own lives but when we get to heaven we will be reigning without having to take authority over anything. We will not have to take authority over anything. There's not going to be any more, there's not going to be wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and pestilence and famines and death. There's not going to be any more of this. So because we shared about hell on Sunday and we shared about heaven, <laughs> right? Let me just say, this planet that we live on, for those that do not accept Jesus Christ, this is a, the, the important thing of this message is knowing that we need to tell people about Jesus and the importance of accepting Jesus and that Jesus has only good for us and that Jesus can heal the brokenhearted. Jesus can provide when we don't know where it's coming from. But, but this 
earth and everything we have in this earth, for people that don't accept Jesus, <clears throat> this earth is going to be the closest thing to heaven that they will ever have known. And for those that have accepted and received Jesus as Lord and Savior, this earth is going to be the closest thing to hell that we'll ever experience. Even with all the wonderful good experience we have and, you know, having wonderful times with family and friends and, and laughing and just enjoying life, this earth is the closest the children of God will ever experience hell. That's good news. That's real, real, really good news. We are on our way to heaven, and our job is to make sure that we try to keep everybody that we can from going to hell. Because we're not going there. That's not, that's not our place. We're in the middle. We're in the middle, caught between heaven and hell. And our destination is heaven, and we need to make sure that we tell people about Jesus. Jesus loves you. <laughs> I don't care what happens in traffic or at work or what happens at school or what happens wherever we go. Remember, Jesus loves them. Jesus loves them. Jesus loves them and wants them to come to heaven when it's all said and done. Amen? Isn't that good news? It's good news. Now, sometimes it's hard to hear about hell, but if you're not going there, it's good to hear about it, knowing that you're not going because of Jesus, because of the blood of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Did you get anything? <clears throat> Let me just say, did you get a little blessed? Amen? Amen. <laughs> Sunday was like, oh, God. <laughs> I tried to make it sound like good news. You're not going there. <laughs> it's a place. Let me just say the reason I shared the message was because it's in the Bible. I just didn't share it to be a provocateur. <laughs> I shared the message of hell because it's in the Bible. And we need to know what the word of God says. Amen. And when you, when you go up to people that haven't accepted Jesus, you need to know what the word of God says about heaven and hell. That there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And all you got to do is accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior.